Roll call. Mr. Vieira. Here. Dr. Vogt. Here. Mrs. Wittes. Here. Dr. Selly. Here. Mr. Dangler. Here. I hereby certify that this meeting has been posted in the newspaper in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and posted as required by law. Thank you. Chief Roba, Parking Willow Evans. Yes. So we had a request by the school system. Uh, we're talking about Willow Avenue. If you're driving down Willow Avenue, the school will be on your right-hand side toward Prospect right there. So for about 440 feet, they want to make it no parking between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. There's already some spots there for where they park um, to let the kids out. But apparently people park there, so it forces the buses to park side by side, and it's not safe for them, or it's not safe for the kids, and it's also holds up people from getting where they want to go. So they want to just make it no parking, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, school days for approximately 440 feet there. And uh, if you say yes to that, we'll do the ordinance and paint the uh, curb and put up the signs and make it happen. Yeah, I've seen the yard. It's pretty tight. Yeah, it's, it gets a little pretty hard there when you're, yeah. yeah, when you're on both sides and then they can't get the buses in there. Mm -hmm. So there's no downside to it, right? Yeah, I don't think there's, I mean, there's parking on the other side of the, street so and most of those houses over there have driveways or at least some driveways the only thing is, is, you're, is you're probably losing a couple parking spots on the road but again it stops at four too so if you come home after work at four o'clock you, you can see yeah. the yeah so I, I, don't, I don't think there's i don't think there's too much of a downside where people would be uh people would be worried about it yeah okay good good what is Yes, thank you. Uh, several months ago, I tasked our department heads to review their fee ordinances for the respective departments and look to see if we were deficient or if we were in a good place as far as adequate fees to cover the cost of some of the uh, services that we provide to residents. Uh, back on January 22nd, after reviewing all of these, I sent to the members of council uh, recommendations based on their input for many of our ordinances. Uh, tonight we have for introduction ordinance 10-20, which proposes uh, several changes to our fees. And these range from birth certificates, marriage licenses, to ABC licenses for our liquor, uh, liquor establishments, review fees for food establishments, restaurants. Uh, it introduces a new category of body art establishments, tattoo parlors. We've never had any type of uh, review for those. And there are several others. Uh, Cats and dogs, now, all these different things. Uh, most of these changes are based on comparisons to other similar municipalities. Uh, I did get a comment back from Council Vice President Selly that she had looked through. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the things we're dealing with, our mercantile license fee hasn't been changed for 30 years. I was going to ask you that. When yeah. was the last so, time they got changed? So you will see it's a significant increase, but it brings up us up on par with other municipalities like Freehold Township. Also, uh, there aren't that many municipalities in Monmouth County that have their own health department, but we did a comparison, I, I say we, Sid Johnson, our health officer, compared our fees to those imposed by the Monmouth County Regional Health Commission and also Freehold Township, which has its own health department. So all of these fees that you see increased are either because of many, many years that they haven't been touched at all, uh, or to get us in comp comparable uh, scale to other municipalities. And just uh, one other issue, for our DPW fees, you'll see a fee for dumpsters. Uh, we're, we're, we're paying for people to get rid of <coughs> refuse from construction jobs. Uh, we're not even covering the cost. So all we're doing is trying to get to a level where we cover the cost of the tipping fees when we go to the landfill. Um, personally, I don't think it's right to private residents should pay for construction fees. This just gets us to an even playing field. Uh, also, the alcohol licenses, they can, they can go as high, you'll see the, the routine license is the plenary retail consumption license. We were at $860. Many towns around us charge $2,500. Uh, 
that's not unusual. We're, but we can only go up 20% of the pre-existing year. So we're going up to $1,030. But this hasn't been touched for several years as well. We're, we're far behind. So those are on for your consideration tonight. Um, I hope you find them acceptable and reasonable. Uh, in talking to our department heads, we all agreed that these were, many of these are overdue. Yes. That, yep. So next year we can. We could do another twenty percent, but there, the cap is twenty five hundred, and there are many municipalities that get twenty five twenty five hundred dollars for a license. We're under a thousand. We're going to go up to just over a thousand. And where are we at with the mechanism that keeps people in line with these things as far as the program? Our IT fellow is in here, but Will has been communicating. Yeah, we've back and forth with Will working with the department to set up. The website works as far as accepting payments. Um, the departments are creating forms to fill out to correspond with the payment. Okay. So there's no problem with processing the fees with a credit card or anything nope. like that? It's accessible through the website as okay. long as these forms and um, corresponding information is filled out. Thank you. Any questions from anyone? No, I knew that was some stuff for the construction degree. I knew that was mighty cheap. Yeah. The way we had it. Yep. I think it was yeah. costing the city a lot of money. Just a dump. Yeah. Also, uh, some of the things that were changed is we're doing them based on the size of some of these permits. For example, for food establishments, whether you had a little luncheonette or you had a 200 seat restaurant, the review fee was the same. So now we've done these on scale for the number of seats or square footage in some of these establishments. So that people are paying proportionally to what it is we're looking at and inspecting. So there, there was some really good thought processes that our, our department heads put into this. One other thing you may be interested, you're a, a guy that likes to check our roads. All finished paving installed less than five years has to be restored using infrared. So we can hold the contractor's feet to the fire and <coughs> get a much better repair on some of our newer pavement. Because we're still gonna, even if we haven't tried to impose a moratorium, we're still gonna have emergency openings. And we want these things restored appropriately. So that's being introduced. Yeah, we need ways. that because um, the county paid Norwood, I mean, right alongside where the intersection, with the other street, the pothole, they put in for the pothole, and they paved it right next to it. Wow. So we need some kind of guidance so we can look at that. So, so that was a, a good overview, George, because you know, as, as you read this for the first time, you look at some of these numbers and you say, wow, you know, the, the how did yes. we get from there to there? Yeah. With, so, uh, so your explanation for everything, because my question was how you know how were these things calculated, and um, so to have a good justifiable answer for anybody that asks, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like we are well prepared with how yes. everything was done. So th th this is even just a more general question. So we now have the benefit of knowing the thinking behind it. How does the general public know the benefit <coughs> of that? You know, we do. We have well, our resolution, and, that, yeah, and I'm, yeah, you, sure. you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they see it on an agenda. Right. Well, yeah. if if the council would like an explanation, possibly at our public hearing, you could task me with giving that same explanation if you like. Oh, okay. Just so people have an understanding yeah. of where we're coming from. We're not doing it just to make money or to impose higher fees, but to make things comparable with other municipalities and. Also to cover some of the costs of our services. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think sometimes that would be helpful. However, yeah. that you know we want to add that into the agenda. Sure. Good. Of course, the only uh, question I had on it is I think the business thing more than doubled. Mercantile. Yeah. What? Yeah. The mercantile. Yeah. What? I thought I, you ahead, know, sorry. maybe to a hundred, but one hundred twenty-five. I mean, well, I, I can tell you, I've got Sid Johnson's research. Um, the other similarly sized municipalities are doing at least 100, and they charge for an extra fee for square footage. Uh, oh, okay. Excessive square footage, so those fees go up. And the others, the majority were 125. And like I said, these, this, is, this is the 30-year-old fee. This is the one that hasn't been touched uh, for 30 years. So I, I know it's significant. Also, we would not impose this until January 1st of next year so that everyone gets their licenses 
completed this year because when you buy a mercantile license, it's only from that day to the end of the calendar year. So this wouldn't actually kick in until next January. That's all I have to say. Okay. Item three, review of the uh, regular meeting agenda. I have a question. Um, resolution 42 2020 uh, approving the Board of Selectmen's Meeting Agenda Number 3 for January 2020. Yeah. Can I just, when you close it? Sure. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Um, 42 So um, you, you also have on your, this is, this is um, companion legislation to the ordinance that you have on that is establishing the program for uh, five-year tax abatements for uh, improvements to commercial, pro uh, commercial property and residential property. So as part of your, your ability to do that is triggered by, by the designation of property as an area in need of rehabilitation. And the law allows you to designate the entire city and it's basically based on very broad criteria, which is a substantial portion of the city's housing stock is X number of years old, a substantial number of the commercial buildings are more than X number of years old. It's not, this is not a blank designation. This is a, a rehabilitation designation that, that allows you to then use these tools, one of which is the tax abatement. So that's, that's all it is. It doesn't, doesn't change anybody's zoning. There's not a rehabilitation plan. There's not anything other than it's a, it makes you qualify to have that tax abatement program. That's the sole reason we're doing it. And you'll notice that the process is different than an area in need of redevelopment. This is not, we're not instituting a study that we're sending to the planning board and they conduct a study. We're saying to the planning board, look, we'd like to adopt this resolution. We're sending it to you to be, to review. So you have a resolution that is essentially transmitting another resolu a resolution to the planning board. So that's why you see two resolutions, the, the proposed resolution that you want to adopt and the resolution saying, hey, planning board, take a look at this. And then the planning board will have a meeting. They'll review it. Their planner will review it. Okay. But essentially, like I said, you'll see in the resolution there's very broad criteria for, for us establishing it. But that's why we're doing it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else regarding the agenda? That was my question too. Yeah, that was my <laughs> question too. <laughs> Thank you.